This is the first video of using the USB JTAG NT software. Uh, by the way, there is a user menu uh, in the installation package. You can uh, read it, but if you prefer to watch the video, and this video is for you. First time when we start the application, it will uh, so ask you to configure the device, which device you want. And you can see we have a lot of device already uh, pre-populated. So let's say if I want to do a uh, modern SP6120, uh, uh, one way is to select from the category here, uh, modern, and then you can go here to search for the uh, 6120. The second method is by the protocol, say I want to program the SPI flash, which is here. And in here, we also can find the SB6120. Uh, another way is going here, typing SB and uh, 61. It's It will be here as well. So let's say if I click here, and then you can position your software to uh, whatever size you want. Here is the typical user layout for the USB JTAG NT or Ulink NT user. Um, there are certain areas layout here and on top of it is a file menu uh, menus and then there is the most useful controls here as well as some of the information in here. Uh, on the left side is the file browser. So if you, your target is 6120, you can dedicate a file folder for it. And next time you switch to the 6120, it will automatically go to this folder. And on the bottom side, it will display some information about the file you choose. And on the right side here, there are uh, tabs here. First is the output. Some of the information uh, will be displayed here and then will be memory tabs. So the USB JTAG NT uh, logically can uh, logically organize your memory into uh, named memory space. And if you look at this address is from zero to say two uh, one ff zero then this next one will start from two zero zero so they are uh, in the same big block but we separate them logically so if you want to either back up or erase individual block you c instead of typing the memory address you can directly just say i want to erase it like click here and it will be here so the memory space here a uh, block here also represent the range here you see if i click blank it, the range will be automatic black. So if I'm in this view and I want to select certain area to program, instead of typing the, on the tabs, I can say, okay, I want to program this area. And then you can click this button. So the all flash is combined all these together into one block. So if you want to say, I want to back up entire flash, you can select here or here. Uh, this area is important as it's a command, uh, we call CLI, a command line interface. You can type in the command. Most of the function can use the command to operate. Let's say if I want to clear the screen here, I can do something here, okay? Clear the screen. As well, let's say I want to type help and it's help here. I can also use the one of command called CLS CLS and also clear it. So uh, for advanced user, uh, this will be a lot of helpful because we also have a script feature which you can um, execute the command in sequence or even have some logic like jump and loops. So on the bottom here, there's a status, status here and some of the status in here as well. We can talk about this later. Um, for beginners, these button probably already be enough. Let's first talk about the load memory. The first function in file here is open file, and there are several ways to open file. The open file means you open a disk file 
into the USB JTAG MT software memory in here, in the memory space here. And after we go in here, we can either program to the target or you can do anything like separate them to different file. So the first way to do this is make sure you select the right memory space here. U boot is fine, or you can say O oh, oh, oh flash. So I want to open a backup I saved before. I can use either open here or open here. And then we can select the folder here. And this is my eight megabyte dump uh, created in 2009 and open. It will say this file is being loaded. Not only this file is being loaded, the default folder is being changed to this folder. And you can see the memory is being loaded. Okay, this is one way to load this memory. Another way is, let's erase it, uh, initialize it, so not erase, initialize the memory. And you can click here. The first is select the file, the second one, is select this here. Uh, double click also works. So let's say I have another file. I don't know, this, these are meaningless, so I can double click here. So this is very quick. And one more way to do this is using the drag and drop. Here I will show you how to drag and drop the file. So let's say I have a backup here. I can click, hold it, and drop here. You see, the file is being dropped. One additional way to open the file is go file here in the recent files. There are so many files are recently created. You can say, I want to go this file, and you click here. This file is being loaded. So this is very convenient for people to do testing, and they have open files. There, the storage for this one is up to 20 files here. So any of them can be reloaded. Let's say I want to load here and this file be loaded. Or I can go to the previous one, which is 8 meg backup. Uh, this one goes 6120. The second most used function in the file is save. So the save means the opposite of load. If I have a memory here, let's say these memories are read from the target flash and I want to save it then you can either select the whole flash or say, I want to back up this one here, say. And then you click save here or here, say. And what is save is say, uh, you can name it UBF1 uh, or either give some date, let's say 2020, uh, something like that and save it. So the file will be saved in here. And basically in the file menu here, you are either load the memory from disk to memory or memory to disk. From time to time, when you see these data are too clouded and you want to clear the screen, there is a simple function in here called uh, clear screen. And you can click, uh, if you mouse hover it, you can see on the bottom side here will here will show the function of the uh, the button. Say when I hover here, say clear up the screen, or even on the menu. If I toggle in the menus, it will say what function it's going to be. So this function is clear the screen. The first function under tools is config, and we can either execute from here or click this button, and here we can search the target or search from the category protocol or tar direct target select. Um, the feature here is uh, there's also some function called register view. These are useful for certain targets like uh, BDM, NT, and MIPS target. You can do simple debugs. You can see the register of the target. And auto script is uh, when you select it, and then it will auto-execute a script. Uh, this is for advanced use, and we are not going to talk about it. The CFI debug is recently added a feature that if you find uh, unknown unknown flash, and we cannot easily uh, make the flash, and then we can save this file to, to us, and we can create the XML for you. 
And one more additional uh, f setting in here is setting uh, select where the script directory is going to be. On the menu here, a uh, tools here, there is a activation menu. This is a lot of questions being asked. Uh, let's say I plug the target and a dialog of activation will populate it. If the device is not activated, this dialog will be populated automatically. And if it's uh, already activated, we can show you later on. So the activation idea is you have a hardware with the proper hardware ID and you need to give your original email address and then we will give you the code. And once the code is generated, then you, you can install to any computer you want. Uh, in here, let's say I already have the code, I can use the online activation. So click and the online activation is done. If I receive the activation code via email, you can also use the uh, copy and the paste with the code. And then you should click OK. And you can see also it says activated. And once activated, you can go here and see the hardware ID and the address and the activation. These button disappears. If you if you have never received an activation code and you want to you want one, you need to try to email activate. But sometimes if you do not have the system properly set up, like in this case this does nothing because you do not have the configuration with the proper email account set. So what you should do is email us with your hardware ID and the email address, then we will generate the code for you. And once you do this, then you can next time say, I want to activate online and like I did. So here you will see it is activated. It is very important. If it's not activated, the, the software will not run properly. The hardware will not work with the target you selected. These two functions, uh, new flash and new target XML are for advanced users and we can ignore this for now. If, if future people still interested, we can talk about this feature. The following function is called language and there are some languages being pre-translated. Let's say I want to switch to uh, simplify Chinese here and we can select and then the menus and helps becomes simplified Chinese. Uh, and we can go back to default English. The, this, this function is trying to edit the device file, which we created, but I do not find this very useful in here because once we use it, it's an file from the browser and it's a, it's a viewer, it's not really an editor. Uh, we can use the another function here to uh, another feature we can use to edit it. So another function under tools is the recent target. Uh, same as we have the recent files, we can have up to 20 uh, targets selected. Let's say I want to switch to, um, uh, let's say a router. We can say select a router and it will switch the router. Not only that, it will also switch to the uh, folder as well. Eh? It's not, uh, let, me, let me switch another target here, say. You see, when we switch here, it will the folder will switch as well. There are three functions under help here. The first one is the connection. And also we have this button in here. So this one is very important for beginner, is for each target, how to, do we make the connection? Okay, how we want to connect the target? Say this is the 25F040, which is SPI, and then this is a layout of SPI chip, and this on the left side is how the USB JTAG NT uh, needs to be connected, and on the right side, how the U-Link NT is connected. Let's say this is the ground, then you need to connect this ground, and the CS is connect to CS pin here, and such and such. Let's say I have another target, which is a, a router. Uh, let's say this router. And then you can see your connection will be completely different. Connection will be JTAG pin. If it's a 14 pin JTAG and 
and so on. If I have a BDM, let's say I have BDM, which is a car engine, let's say ECU, and then we can see the connection will be something like this, okay? Uh, other example would be ST20. Let's see, ST20, so I have this device and then the connection will be the so people should get used to go here and check regularly if you find it's not working and see if you connect properly or not the second function under help is go to the configuration folder in here you can see we, the target and where the proper configuration is stored and if you want to create a new xml file a new target it should store in here okay so this is how it goes and the next function is about we also have about here it will tell you the software version and what device you are using and um, the contact information website if we have some test modules which will be available for some targets it's not available for all the targets here